Don't know where to start in standard? Sick of high prices, convoluted decks, and the ever-looming threat of bans? Don't you wish you could just go down to Friday Night Magic and play a game of magic again? No worries and no thing that will break the bank? Well then have I got a deck for you. Blast back into magic with Red Desert Winds. One of the most reliable and classic strategies in magic has exploded back on the scene. Red Deck Winds does what it says on the tin. It plays mono red and it wins. Nothing is getting banned from this list. Nothing is outrageously expensive here. The only possible upgrades are sideboard cards that might not even be relevant in your meta. The main board is perfect as presented here. Just grab these cards and for only about $40, you can go down to Showdown at your local game store. Let's take a look. Red Deck Wins maximizes the mana curve, applying pressure with cheap yet aggressive creatures, and in so doing, gaining an overwhelming advantage over your opponent. Starting at 1 CMC, your converted mana cost are cards like Falconrath Gorger, a 2-1 vampire for 1 red. Although Gorger has the ability of giving each vampire creature card you own that isn't on the battlefield madness, this is not really relevant because the only vampires in the deck are the Gorgers themselves. What we really like about this card is the 2-1 for 1, this being a textbook example of red deck wins utilizing mana curve for advantage. Along those same lines, Village Messenger is a 1-1 with haste for one, great turn one drop, who with a little luck will easily flip into a 2-2, wow, with menace, nice. Early game, especially against mid-range, control, and other decks that kick in later on the curve, a flipped messenger is likely. The deck also takes advantage of Beaumont Courier, a 1-1 with haste for one and a really interesting ability. Whenever Courier attacks, exiles the top card of your library face down, and any time you can spend one red to discard your hand and sacrifice the Courier, and then put all cards exiled with Beaumont Courier into their owner's hands. This is incredibly good. Drop it down turn one or two and begin swinging right away. Each attack gives you a kind of card draw. More like a pseudo card draw, so it's not straight drawing you those cards into your hand, so much as it is tucking them away for later. Swing as much as possible early game, keep Courier as a chump blocker late game, and whenever it is about to die or whenever you're out of cards in hand, spend that one red to hopefully draw a windfall of gas. Obviously, there's a danger that if Courier dies and you don't have one mana open, all these cards are lost. So you want to be sure to keep a mana open if possible when Courier is doing its thing. Moving on to cards with two CMC, an absolute all-star is Kari Zev, Skyship Raider. Some players get so excited for this card that I can see them running a full playset, but I really think only a pair is needed. If you really love her, you can experiment by going up to three times, but I really feel a full playset is just excessive, especially since she's legendary. Kari Zev is a 1-3 first strike with Menace, and whenever she attacks, you create a legendary 2-1 red monkey creature token named Regavan that's tapped and attacking. Exile that token at the end of combat. Like Beaumont Courier, this is the gift to red deck wins that keeps on giving. If Regavan is killed in combat, he'll be back next time Carry swings. Carry is hard to block due to menace, and first strike gets troublesome, especially when we, oh, I don't know, place a Cartouche of Zeal on her, of which the deck runs a full playset. Cartouche of Zeal is an enchantment aura that reads, when Cartouche of Zeal enters the battlefield, target creature can't block this turn. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has haste. And Kari isn't the only thing we'd want to drop this on, because also at 2 CMC is Earthshaker Kenra, a 2-1 with haste that reads, when Earthshaker Kenra enters the battlefield, target creature with power less than or equal to Earthshaker Kenra's power can't block this turn. In addition to all of this, Kenra has Eternalize, which will let us exile this card from our graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it, except that token is a 4-4 black zombie jackal warrior. Wow, it's all the things. This too is how our deck hits fast, hits early, and still is fuel to hit later in game. For a red and a colorless, we also run a playset of Incendiary Flow, which deals three damage to target creature or player. If a creature dies this way, exile it. Obviously, this slightly more expensive lightning bolt is still good for a bolt to the head, but the exile is very relevant in a standard filled with cards that can be trouble if they hit the graveyard. Therefore, this is great removal for anything with Embalm or Eternalize. And continuing on, at three on our mana curve, we run full play sets of On Crop Crasher and Reckless Bushwhacker. 
favorite of mine, Reckless Bushwhacker, is a 2-1 with Haste and Surge for one and a red. Now you can cast this spell for its Surge cost if you have cast another spell this turn, meaning you can drop it at two instead of three? Well, yes please there, but best of all is that when Reckless Bushwhacker enters the battlefield, if that Surge cost was paid, other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until end of turn. Fabulous. On Crop Crasher is a 3-2 with haste, and what's more, you may exert On Crop Crasher as it attacks. When you do, target creature can't block this turn. We're also running a pair of Hand Wear Garrison. A 2-3 where, whenever it attacks, you create two 1-1 red human creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. Again, just great value here for three and amazing on our mana curve. Garrison also melds with Handware Battlements, which we are running a lone copy of, but I want to say something about this here. What we need to remember about Garrison is that it's an amazing card in its own right without the meld. If you pull off a meld, hey, more power to you. A great accomplishment and likely a signal that the game is about to end in your favor. But Garrison just does so much on its own. As I said, we're running a lone copy of the Battlements. It's a land that taps for colorless, and if we want to spend spend red and tap it, it'll give target creature haste until end of turn. If you want to try and pull off the meld, it'll cost you three and two red to exile both the garrison and the battlements and meld them into Handwire, the writhing township, which is a 7-4 with trample and haste. What's more, yes there's more, when Handwire, the writhing township attacks, create two 3-2 three, two colorless Eldrazi horror creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. But our real finisher here is the only card at four on our mana curve, Hazaret the Fervent. One of, if not the most expensive card in this deck at, whoa, $6 each. Hazaret the Fervent is a 5-4 indestructible with haste. Now Hazaret the Fervent can't attack or block unless you have one or fewer cards in hand. But with red deck wins, that's very likely to be the case already by the time you're ready to cast. If needed, you can spend two and red to discard a card. Oh, hey, the madness of those Falcon Wrath Gorgers is relevant. Also, when you do this, Hazaret deals two damage to each opponent. Now, I know a lot of folks are probably asking about two cards that the deck is not running. Glorybringer and Chandra, Torch of Defiance. No, 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 no. These cards do not belong in the main board here. Chandra is too expensive at four. That's taking the spot that Hazaret deserves. She doesn't do enough in terms of this deck's strategy, except, of course, in very specific situations situations, which is why you might sideboard her. But all in all, at four, you want Hazaret in hand, not Chandra. And Glorybringer is too high along that curve. The only place these would go is in the sideboard, but even then you'd be paying, yikes, over 60 bucks just for four cards. Truth is, these are sideboard only and we can easily do without. Yes, if you want the absolute best 75 possible, you can run a pair and no more than a pair in your sideboard, but this is not a deck that wants Glorybringer or Chandra main board. Mana base is nice and cheap. 13 mountains and in addition to the battlements, a full play set of both Ramunu, Ramu, Ramu, Rabu, dang these names, what the heck, wizards? The whatever ruins the desert. Ruins is a desert that taps for a colorless, can tap to pain ping you for one life in the event you need a red mana, and for two red and two colorless lets you sacrifice a desert to do two damage to each opponent. Obviously the ruins sacrifice themselves in a pinch, but ideally I'd love to have some of our final land in play, the sun scorched desert. The desert pings our opponents for one when it comes into play, taps for a colorless and can be sacked to the ruins. I love that Sun Scorched Desert doesn't even come into play tapped, so it doesn't slow us down. Although it does have that inconvenience of colorless mana, but there you go. Great synergy here between the two deserts, and you'll find dropping a desert to ping your opponent, then later sacrificing it for two, and then maybe sacrificing the ruins to itself for two more damage is all going to add up fast. What does our sideboard look like? As I mentioned, for a fully upgraded deck, you can add four cards, the two Glorybringers and the two Chandras. But also, as I mentioned, these four cards cost more than the rest of the deck itself, and I just don't think anyone who isn't playing in a PPTQ or at a GP needs both. Unless, of course, you already have these cards, then fine, put them in the sideboard. Sideboard, not mainboard. What we do run is three copies of Magma Spray, again, great for exiling things, instead of sending them to the graveyard, two Chandra's Defeat for Red Mirrors, a pair of Scavenger Ground for graveyard strategies, Occam Firebird, the 50 cent mythic that I am comfortable running instead of Glorybringer in the side, a couple of Kari Zev's Expertise for taking control of big bad creatures or vehicles. Obviously, as far as artifact destruction goes, there's a couple choices. I like Release the Gremlins. 
And finally, as this is Red Desert Winds and we're running eight deserts, I feel it's safe to have two Sand Stranglers in the side. A great card, but of course you need one of those deserts in play or in the graveyard to zap an opponent's creature for three. Red Deck Winds is a great deck for taking down to Friday Night Magic or the Standard Showdown. Best of all, the deck is only about $40. If you've been looking to begin Standard, to get back into Standard for some kind of starting point in the game, then this, right here, right now, is one of your best bets. But there's a few other choices, and if Friday Night Magic isn't your thing, and the Standard Showdown isn't something you want to show up to, and you're just looking for an awesome deck to play with friends and not spend a lot of cash, then why not check out one of the battle decks from Card Kingdom? A whole new line just hit the shelves there, and may I suggest Hatchet Men? Give a man a sword and he'll slay for a day. Teach a man to use a butcher's cleaver and he'll slay for a lifetime. Hatchet Men is a white-blue-red equipment deck. It's loaded full of fun humans to arm with knives and pitchforks and turn them sideways into killing machines. It's a full 60-card casual deck and ready to play at only $9.99. Grab another to play against it, such as Consume the Weak, a black-red-green deck that devours its own creatures for fun and profit. As I've said in my review video, battle decks are a lot of fun, and these new ones are some of the best yet. But of course, there's dozens to choose from. They're all $9.99 and a great fun way to play casual magic. Check out our sponsor, cardkingdom.com, forward slash TCC to see for yourself, support the channel in doing so, or just use that site to buy the singles you need to build something like this Red Desert deck and win. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.